Billy Martin died at approximately 5:40 tonight in a car crash. Uh, amid all the uh, amid all the violence and the deaths in Romania, the president of Romania and his wife were executed today. They can't extradite Noriega to the United States because Panama has no extradition treaty. This is the last Christmas that Ed Koch, as mayor of the city of New York, Cardinal O'Connor brought tears to his eyes during midnight mass last night. I'm very proud to call you my friend. Three, two, one. Roll five, up effects. From the newsroom, this is Channel 9 News. With Rollin Smith, Lloyd Lindsay Young Weather, and Russ Salzberg Sports. Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Roland is off tonight. We have a tragic story to report this Christmas night. One of New York's most colorful and controversial sports figures, Billy Martin, is dead. Martin was killed tonight near Binghamton in upstate New York. He was 61 years old. Martin was in a pickup truck, which skidded off an icy road and down an embankment. He was a passenger in that truck. He was known as Battlin' Billy, and his career was marked by turmoil, both as a player and as a manager. Yankee owner George Steinbrenner hired him as a skipper five times and fired him five times as well. Martin also fought a number of off-the-field brawls and fought drinking problems also. Right now, we get more on the story from Russ Salzberg. Russ is just back from Montclair, where he spoke with uh, Martin's longtime manager, longtime teammate, I should teammate. say, and friend, Excuse Yogi me. Berra. You know, I always wanted to go to Yogi's house um, to meet Yogi Berra, maybe chat with him on his own turf, and certainly not under these circumstances. Uh, naturally, Yogi and the entire family pretty shook up. As I say, I just got back, and let's see my conversation with Yogi Berra. You know, a lot of first thing people come into mind when you have a couple of drinks or something, but uh, somebody else was driving the car, and I heard he just, he wasn't hurt, you know, a little bit, but Billy got the worst of it. Uh, I've been out with Billy a lot of times. Billy's a kind-hearted man. He is. Uh, I think some people rub him wrong when he hears a, uh, Guy saying something bad about somebody else, he might punch you in the nose, but otherwise he was a great, uh, kind-hearted guy. The people liked him. Uh, you notice when he comes back for old-timers game, he gets a tremendous hand. And uh, You're talking as if he's still with us. Yeah, well, I miss him. I was with him two weeks ago down in Nashville, Tennessee, and he looked great, and he was very happy when I talked to him. Okay, what do you say we now take a look at Billy Martin as we remember him? in a Yankee uniform. The other, the guy's over, he comes to a stop and he breaks halfway. He's all right. You He's mean you're going right. to allow that? I'm going to allow you it. You can allow the break in his knee too when he throws to first base? Is that a block? As far as we're concerned, all right. no. All right. Okay. All right. Fiery was definitely the best way to describe Billy Martin. He joined the Yankees in 1950, played with him through 57, and he was a member of five championship teams. On the field, boy, he bait every manager, fight for whatever he thought was right. And they said between the lines, he definitely was the best. Most celebrated incident when he wanted to get at Reggie Jackson, Elson Howard in between, and certainly of all the people, he definitely had a love-hate relationship with his boss. What do you mean? <laughs> that is not, uh, that's not right. <laughs> I'm handling the trades. That isn't the way we saw it, I have the right to call you in the dog. Oh, that's not the way it's going to be, George. Oh, you're damn right it is, and if you don't like it, you're fired. You haven't hired. Billy Martin dead at the age of 61. Sports is supposed to be fun, not fun, not tonight. As Yogi said, uh, undoubtedly there would be speculation of drinking and driving, and we should reinforce that Billy was not driving. He was a passenger in that truck. Yes, uh, it's interesting. As soon as I walked into the house, Yogi's wife greeted me, and um, you know we were talking, and I asked her what her initial reaction was, and she said, you know, you would think if Yogi was going to go in an accident, Billy. he would be, uh, God forbid, if, if Billy was gonna go, he might have been drinking and it might have been he driving. And they understood the way Billy was. Billy was uh, a character. That she said to me, Billy was crazy, but I loved him and he was like my brother. I mean, Yogi and his wife go back with Billy a long, long time. Real sad. Certainly a tragic time for the family and, and for all the fans in our hearts and condolences go out to the family tonight. Well, apparently, uh, the latest we get is that he bought this horse farm in upstate New York, and he was pulling in. Apparently, you know, it's a farm, so I, I can't visualize, but it's a long driveway, and he was pulling in right almost into the driveway, and then it went down an embankment. Yeah. We'll have more from you a little yeah, bit later in sports. Thank you, Russ. 
Deposed, captured, tried, and executed all within four days. Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu had ruled with an iron fist for 24 years. But today, his liberated people struck back. Found guilty of genocide, he and his wife were executed after a secret military trial. On the streets of Bucharest, army patrols loyal to the people are still battling security police loyal to Ceausescu. As a show of their new freedom, Romanians are flying their flag with the hammer and, sick hammer and sickle cut out. CNN's Mark Leff reports on what one Bucharest radio announcer said today was the killing of the Antichrist on this Christmas day. Most Romanians had been waiting for years to hear this. Nicolae Ceausescu and Elena Ceausescu have been condemned to death. Nicolae Ceausescu and Elena Ceausescu have been sentenced to death and to confiscation of their personal property. The sentencing remained unchanged and it has been carried out. Out of sight during a week of revolution, he was never out of mind. For nearly a quarter century, Nicolae Ceausescu basked in carefully orchestrated glory. The chant at party congresses was, the people, the party, Ceausescu. Nicolae Ceausescu, an elementary school dropout trained as a shoemaker and a communist, didn't do it alone. His wife, Elena, held senior government and party jobs, as did his three children and several other relatives. Despite his doctrinaire Stalinism, Ceausescu walked a fine line between East and West. Romania belongs to the Warsaw Pact military alliance, but in 1968, he denounced the joint invasion of neighboring Czechoslovakia to crush the reforms of the Prague Spring. In 1979, he denounced the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. A week ago, with rebellion brewing in Timisoara, Ceausescu left the country for a visit to Iran and left the dreaded security forces to deal with the problem. Friday, Ceausescu's last public act after 24 years in power was to declare a state of emergency and to try to get himself and his family away. It didn't work. Finally, after a week of turmoil, the 71-year-old president and his wife, who for decades had lived like royalty, died no more nobly than thousands of their countrymen. Mark Leff, CNN reporting. And meanwhile, back in our area tonight, with joy and with anger, Romanian Americans gathered outside of the United Nations today. Gayi was there. She has this report. <laughs> Romanian Americans held the vigil outside the United Nations building in hopes of generating support for the pro-democracy movement in their homeland. But the demonstration was overshadowed by the news of the Ceausescu executions. We are happy he is dead, but we are angry because they kill him too easy. One woman said she experienced the terror of Ceausescu security forces when she lived in Romania. She says they tried to kill her and that she was not alone. And very many people are, are beaten to death, were beaten to death by the secret police. Very many friends of mine uh, were found uh, dead in, in, in the forests or, you know, especially intellectuals. Meantime, members of the Dimitru Romanian Orthodox Church were grateful that Christmas could once again be celebrated in their homeland, but the price of that freedom was high. Church rules here have always forbid memorial services to be held on Christmas or Easter, but on this Christmas there was an exception. People are dying and they, you know, they can't spend Christmas at home, they're on the streets, no food. I think that this particular Christmas will signify for years and years to come the day when Romania has again turned to having Christmas trees, Christmas carols, and the significance that this day has had for centuries, namely the birth of Christ. Although these Romanian Americans are relieved by what's transpired these past 24 hours, they are hardly satisfied. Their prayers are still to the homeland this Christmas because the fight is not over yet. At the UN, Gay Yi, Channel 9 News. Meanwhile, tonight, tough words from the United States. It wants Noriega, and it wants him now. The United States has told the Vatican in no uncertain terms that it wants the former Panamanian strongman handed over. However, President Bush has very little leverage. 
Diplomatic sources say the Vatican wants to unload the general, but there are apparently no takers. Spain had been talked about as a possibility, but tonight the Spanish foreign ministry said no way. Noriega definitely is not going to Spain. That's the position of the Spanish government. Today, Defense Secretary Dick Cheney hinted that the U.S. might still go after Noriega if he were to be transferred to another country. Our objective, uh, which some in the press criticized us for, uh, was, among other things, in addition to saving American lives, protecting American interests under the Canal Treaty, restoring democracy to Panama, we also wanted to, if we could, capture Mr. Noriega and return him to the United States for trial. President Bush has summoned National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft to his retreat to discuss options. Meanwhile, Noriega's attorney says the general is taking it easy. In the past, we have dealt with the papal nuncio during the other negotiations that had failed. He feels secure with the man and obviously with the Vatican. Today, newly installed President Andara went on the offensive. Killing people uh, is not, uh, in fact, a political activity. Uh, selling drugs is not a political activity. Uh, all these crimes on humanity are not political activity. We don't consider him a political asylum. But while today it seemed the U.S. had gained a firmer grip on the country, the Pentagon reported 23 U.S. servicemen have died in the fighting and 303 have been injured. Well, tonight an associate of Noriega has surrendered to the U.S. military. Luis Del Cid is one of the five Panamanians named in the U.S. drug indictments. The Drug Enforcement Administration has already flown him to Miami. There is still much more to come tonight on Channel 9 News. We will show you Pope John Paul's Christmas message to the world. A look at how business held up for merchants this holiday season, and you will meet some very talented young playwrights. At Macy's After Christmas Sale, find 20 to 50% savings and great values on everything you wanted and didn't get. Now through Saturday, save on fashion for the whole family. Accessories, exquisite jewelry, innovative housewares, the latest electronics. Treat yourself to the gifts you really wanted now through Saturday at 20 to 50% savings. No one can resist Macy's After Christmas Sale. Not even Santa. Now more than ever. Les Miserables, the international musical sensation that's taking the world by storm. My own, pretending he is beside me. Monster of the Earth! Monster and a half! Come and help me, Lucifer! At the Broadway Theater, call Telecharge 239-6200 for Les Miserables. Don't miss it. I'm Bob Chisuli, mechanic, race car driver, and auto group president. Now at over 25 franchise locations throughout New Jersey, you can buy a car like never before. Gone forever is the fear and tension of negotiating price because my display cars have red tag marked down pricing right on the window. Waiting for sales are a thing of the past. Buy the car you want with everyday low pricing and savings you can see. For complete financing, award-winning service in a Bob Chisuli location, call 1-800-USA-AUTO. With all the bad news in the headlines today about kids, we thought you would like to see the other side of the story. Kids who are using their talents to follow their dreams. Great kids. Teenagers who are using their abilities to the fullest to make their world and ours a little bit better. I've been given a gift. I'm Jerry O'Connell, star of My Secret Identity, and I'll be your host for Great Kids, Tuesday at 8 o'clock here on Channel 9. Bullets have shattered Christmas cheer tonight in one Union County town. A shooting has left one woman dead, her roommate hospitalized. Matthew Schwartz is here now with the details on that story. Matthew? And Jennifer, her roommate is hospitalized tonight in guarded condition. Early this afternoon, a 28-year-old Kenilworth woman became that town's first murder victim since 1965. Sue Madosky was killed apparently because, in the Christmas spirit, she had helped a co-worker. She was kind-hearted. She'd do anything for anybody. 
the kind-heartedness of Steve Madosky's sister apparently led to her being shot through the heart. Sue Madosky was murdered in her Kenilworth home on Christmas afternoon. Her roommate was shot several times. Family friends say Sue Madosky and her roommate, Sue Carestis, had let a co-worker from a Long Branch bakery stay with them here at their home for the holidays because the man had nowhere else to go. The friends say the women were shot after they came home unexpectedly to find the co-worker, 32-year-old Albert Hairston, burglarizing the house. Police will neither confirm nor deny that. We're not sure of what the motive was. Was the suspect staying with them because he didn't have a place to stay and did they come home and find him going through their belongings? Uh, that could be the case. We're not definite on that. The suspect was caught a few blocks from the murder scene by a Roselle Park police officer shortly after the shootings. These two friends of the victim's family had arrived at Sue Madosky's parents' house for Christmas dinner when they learned of her murder. She was very family-oriented. I know she loved her family and she really loved her mother a lot. I know that. And uh, she didn't deserve it. Not on Christmas. Not ever. The victim's neighbors are also stunned because until this Christmas day, a murder had not happened in Kenilworth since 1965. Besides uh, being Christmas day, you never would expect a thing like that right on your, almost on your doorstep around. The whole, this block has always been quiet. Police will not say what the suspect allegedly was taking from the home before the women arrived. They do say drugs were not involved in the murder of Sue Madosky, who would have celebrated her 29th birthday this Friday. Jennifer? All right, Matt, thank you. Well, there is also little joy in another New Jersey neighborhood tonight. A raging fire broke out late this afternoon in a residential section of Passaic. It began in a two-family house, quickly spread to two adjoining houses. Firefighters had it under control in about 45 minutes, but not before there was heavy structural damage. Luckily, however, no one has been reported injured. It seems that we've been able to get everyone out of the homes. We were very concerned about the children uh, with the holidays, with Christmas, uh, that they may have some trapped inside. But uh, to the best of our knowledge, they've all been able to uh, be brought out. Well, the families left homeless tonight are being set up in temporary shelters. The cause of the fire is still unclear. However, investigators suspect a gas leak was to blame. Well, the tragedies of this day took place against a background of Christmas observances. At the Vatican, Pope John Paul spoke Rhode to the Island crowds in St. Peter's Square. In his traditional Christmas message, he expressed hope that the spirit of peace would spread across Eastern Europe, and he offered a special prayer for Romania. He said that it's celebrating this Christmas in fear and in trembling, but also in joy. In Israel, there was also fear and joy. Linda Scherzer reports. <laughs> Midnight Mass in Bethlehem. The sounds of Christmas filled the Church of the Nativity. And at least for one night, peace prevailed in the troubled town where Jesus Christ was born. But in neighboring Jerusalem, all was not quiet. While visiting Archbishop Desmond Tutu preached to a flock of 500 Palestinian worshipers, a bomb threat was called in, forcing the church to evacuate and regroup outside. Tutu had just finished telling Palestinians that, quote, God was on their side. We say peace is going to come in this land because it is God's will and nobody will stop it. But even the Catholic Patriarch of Jerusalem says there's little to celebrate. Nobody has in his heart the joy of Christmas. While most Christian Arabs boycotted the holiday, tourists continued to flock into Manger Square Christmas morning under the watchful eye of Israeli troops who frisked everyone going into the Church of the Nativity. For the third straight year, Palestinians marked Christmas by honoring their struggle against the Israeli occupation. Linda Scherzer, CNN, Bethlehem. Well, as you undoubtedly well know over the years, Cardinal O'Connor and Mayor Koch have become close friends. Well, last night at midnight mass in St. Patrick's Cathedral, the Cardinal paid a touching tribute to the outgoing mayor. It would be difficult to imagine a mayor of New York who could be more supportive of the church than has been true of Mayor Koch. I'm very proud to call you my friend. Mayor Koch, touched and quiet. 
Out with the old, in with the new, just one week before he takes over at City Hall, Mayor-elect David Dinkins has reaffirmed his commitment to new housing for the homeless. It was the eighth straight year that the Sheraton Center invited the homeless to dinner, and Dinkins helped serve. The production of, of affordable housing and housing for the homeless is at the top of our agenda. It is tremendously important. And Dinkins said that he will shut down shelters where homeless people are afraid to stay. And right now, let's turn over to Lloyd to find out a little bit about the post-Christmas forecast. How you doing, Lloyd? Merry Christmas well, to you. Uh, same to you, Jennifer, and the same to everybody. Happy holidays. Not a bad night out there at all. Let's check our currents. Uh, it is overcast, 24 degrees. Early tomorrow morning, expected to be overcast. There could be a little bit of light snow around. Nothing big. You might want to allow a little extra time for the commute and the temperature around 22. More important, major changes are coming up all week long. We'll have those later in the broadcast. Okay, Lloyd, thank you. And also ahead tonight on Channel 9 News, the story of a Christmas baby born in a patrol car. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. event you've been waiting for. Toyotathon coast to coast. The best time of the year to make your best deal on a new Toyota starts tomorrow. Get ready for a special Sports Illustrated sneak preview. It's unreal. The man, it's like he's from another planet. You never know what he's gonna do. He doesn't even know. He just does it and you're like, well, action. The New Jersey Nets are taking on the toughest teams in the NBA. And it's all happening here on Channel 9. Now catch the key game. The big plays, all the action. When the New Jersey Nets bring NBA excitement to Channel 9. The Nets travel to the Motor City for a duel with the Detroit Pistons. Saturday at 8 on Channel 9. Tonight in Jersey City, there are 22 families not at home for the holidays. Fire raced through their building early this morning. Seven people were hurt. The Red Cross is helping to relocate the families tonight. In the Bronx, heartbreak. A fire destroys a home and a church. But as Heidi Kemp reports, it doesn't destroy the human spirit. My son, we heard him screaming. We thought somebody had attacked him, had come in behind him. And we tried to knock the door in, but we couldn't. And uh, we got, I went back and got my husband. And uh, he uh, turned his back against the door and busted it in. And by that time, my son was, uh, you know, burned. Betty Williams and her husband, Reverend Walter Williams, woke up this Christmas morning to the grim sight of their church and home going up in flames. Reverend Williams has worked for 12 years to make his church a safe haven for street kids and worshipers. But today his son is hospitalized with third degree burns and everything Reverend Williams has worked for has been destroyed. We was planning to get together with our family and our family dinner and everything today, which is a great Christmas for us. <laughs> but Thank, thank God we got out with our lives. The church pastor's family occupied the floors above the church where the fire started. And today, Reverend Williams told me, here on the ground you can see all that's left of their personal belongings. There's nothing. There's nothing that's salvageable. Everything is, is demolished. That's what I have on my back. That's, that's it. Charlotte and the rest of the Williams family have found temporary shelter in a nearby apartment belonging to one of the Reverend's daughters. The quarters are cramped, but Reverend Williams says they'll make do as best they can. You're gonna have prayer, that's most of all. And thank God for our life. It's, that's what we have to do now and try to pick up and go from here. Reverend Williams told me, God willing, he hopes to have services here once again next Sunday. But he admits there's much work to be done and that may be asking too much. In the Bronx, Heidi Kemp, Channel 9 News. Well, it took 15 hours, but a huge fire at an Exxon refinery in Louisiana is finally out. An explosion sparked that fire. It engulfed eight tanks filled with home heating oil. 
One worker was killed. Exxon is looking at whether losing all that oil could worsen home heating oil shortages this winter. Fire officials in Tennessee say that 16 elderly people might be alive today if their building had had sprinklers. They died in a fire last night inside their retirement home. They had gathered with loved ones to celebrate the holiday. At least 50 people were injured. The building had been converted to a nursing home prior to a new law that required the installation of sprinklers. Well, she's only one day old. She can't imagine what all the fuss is about. It's the how and the where and the when she was born that has all her neighbors excited. Mom, too. Clara Sicoli went into labor Christmas Eve while packing presents at her cousin's house. They called 911. Two police officers got her only as far as the patrol car before they had to deliver the baby. Having a baby in police car, it is interesting. <laughs> Everybody looking through the window on my friends. It was a whole crowd oh, looking no. through the window. <laughs> Interesting to say the least. Well, the crowd told her to call the baby Christine because she was born on Christmas Day. And so she did. Happy birthday to Christine and uh, to mom, too. Coming up on Channel 9 News, Russ with more now on the death of former Yankee star and manager Billy Martin. Russ. Crazy glue, strong enough to hold this man suspended in midair, bonds almost anything. Stones that sparkle, rackets that score, puppets that pop, rockets that soar, cases that lock, seats that stroll, radios that rock, skates that roll. From Maryland to Texas, Detroit to Old St. Louis, the country's gone crazy. The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us in supporting the National Archives celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. Many of the most elegant women in the world wear Flemington furs. They come to Flemington because they find outstanding value, the absolute latest fashion, superior quality, and the largest selection of beautiful furs to be found anywhere. So whatever it is you like to do, there's a Flemington fur just for you. Isn't it fun, fun to be you? In a Flemington, Flemington, Flemington fur. Flemington Furs, Flemington, New Jersey. Well, the figures aren't all in yet, but already there are predictions that this year was a great one for Christmas sales. Business reporter Reg Wells takes a look at the season, which I guess just ended. It's Christmas night. The presents have all been opened. Christmas dinner is now history. But the lights still shine brightly. Last week, stores were mobbed, and tomorrow they'll be mobbed again for returns. Christmas sales usually determine whether a store finishes the year in the black. It makes or breaks a store. Americans also spend a lot of money traveling, traveling home for the holidays. According to the AAA, 51 million people hit the highways at Christmas, and each person in a car has usually spent $350 on Christmas presents. For many, the arrival of Christmas often means the departure on a Caribbean vacation. It's uh, colder in Florida now than it's been uh, all year. Continental Airlines now flies to Aruba and Jamaica direct from Newark. Much of the Caribbean was not damaged by Hurricane Hugo, but you have to look out for other potential problems. Grenada is unspoiled, uncrowded, and inexpensive. A controversial airport partially built by Cubans and finished by Americans after the U.S. invasion accommodates jumbo jets. But public works employees have recently been on strike and essential services have been severely disrupted. In the Bahamas, air traffic controllers recently staged a work slowdown causing major delays. Eastern Airlines has resumed flights to Barbados, but baggage handlers there last week staged a work slowdown in a dispute over Christmas bonuses. So you should check first with a travel agent. And remember, the weeks immediately following Christmas are most popular and the hardest to book. I'm just eager to get going, actually. The final days of the year are also the time many investors review their portfolios. I think for the certain kind of companies, it is wise to be in the stock market because you're going to get better growth and you can get dividends that increase. Despite the crash of 1987 and this year's meltdown, 
The Standard & Poor's 500 stock index has increased more than 17% a year for the last five years. That's much better than CDs and much higher than the rate of inflation. Merry Christmas to you. I'm Reg Wells for the Channel 9 Business Report. Hard to believe the season's over already. Well, at 1031, here's a look at our top stories now. Former Yankee manager Billy Martin is dead. He was killed when his pickup truck skidded off a road near Binghamton, New York. And in Romania, Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife have been executed. The new government says that it tried the former dictator and found him guilty of genocide. Well, when moving day comes, we find ourselves cleaning out a lot of old stuff out of the basement, right? Well, that goes not only for the average homeowner, but it also goes for the governor of New Jersey. Thomas Kane has collected a rather strange assortment of items in the past eight years, and Brenda Flanagan today got a chance to look it over. In the state house basement, under lock and key, is a vault full of treasures kept especially for Governor Kane. He collected the stuff over eight years in office, and there's enough to fill up walls with gifts and plaques, boxing gloves, a baseball bat. Well, I can't bring it all home or I can't come home. My wife said that. Coffee cups and giant gavels, eagle sculptures, pairs of barbels, Ronald Reagan jelly beans, shaking hands, and city keys. Every item down there has some memory. A bottle of New Jersey water, college ties, and something from the trade mission to Beijing, an oriental kind of thing. Tons of hats, soft and hard, and t-shirts by the fabric yard. Kane's still deciding what he'll keep and what he'll donate from the heap that for years has been around. Brendan left some stuff. In fact, some of it's still down there, I found. <laughs> What he doesn't bring home or give away, he'll leave here for another day. And maybe Governor Jim will find some neat stuff Tom Kane left behind. In Trenton, I'm Brenda Flanagan, Channel 9 News. Bottle of New Jersey water, huh? Well, coming up on Channel 9 News tonight, Pat Collins reviews the new Jessica Lang film. My it's father. called Music Box. Stay Innocent tuned. Man. We'll be right back. He was unjustly accused. He is a man who is being punished by proxy by a communist government for an action he committed against... There's one more gift you haven't opened yet, and it's from me to you. I got a feeling you're gonna like it. Yeah. It's a special party with special friends. I, I know you're sleeping, but don't go to bed. Stay up with the magical David Copperfield, the delightful Ed Bagley Jr., and the legendary Nancy Wilson. Welcome to the love train. Share a very Merry Christmas on the next Arsenio Hall Show. The Arsenio Hall Show, tonight at 11.30 on Channel 9. What a sale. Levitt's showrooms are loaded with bargains. Items that have never been priced lower all year long. In fact, many pieces have never been priced lower ever. So if you've been waiting for after Christmas sales, wait no longer. This is one sale you can't afford to miss. Levitt's lowest prices of the year. A parade? A party? What's going on in Jefferson Town? I've never been more excited about anything in my entire life. Everyone's celebrating Ann Bishop's million dollar win from Publishers Clearinghouse. It turned out to be my neighbor, which I dearly love. <laughs> I know for sure that real people do win. <laughs> now you can win $10 million. Watch for the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes and send it in fast. On January 26th, you could be a millionaire. We don't have to worry about our retirement now. No. I'm glad that somebody won this and I'm going to send mine back. Hundreds of senior citizens got a chance to reach out and touch their loved ones this holiday. It's an annual Christmas present from Merrill Lynch. People picked by the city's Department of Aging were allowed to call free to anywhere in the world. I try to call to Moscow, to Leningrad, and to Kiev. Kiev I got, but nobody was home. Bring up some hefty phone bills there. Well, one guy showed up after a very busy night. Fortunately for Merrill Lynch, Santa made his calls in person. Well, there's a new dramatic film out. It's called Music Box. It stars Jessica Lange as a lawyer who defends her father. Pat Collins has the review. Jessica Lange could coast on her good looks and her Tootsie Oscar, but she doesn't. She continues to take demanding roles, and the most demanding yet is in Music Box. Jessica plays a lawyer defending her father, 
accused of war crimes. You've got the wrong Michael J. Laszlo. Like hell we do. I beg your pardon? We don't have the wrong man. I didn't do any of this. This is not me. I'm a citizen. I'm a, I'm a good American. If you're a good American, Mr. Laszlo, this country's in big trouble. Is he the murderer the government claims? Or a loving father and grandfather, as his daughter, Jessica Lang, must believe in her heart that her father is innocent. As his lawyer, she must prove he's innocent. My father is simply an innocent man who is unjustly accused. He is a man who is being punished by proxy by a communist government for an action he committed against representatives of that government five years ago. My father is a good man. The witnesses claim Laszlo murdered women and children, hundreds of them, in wartime Hungary. It's not me! It's not me! Costa Garbus, the director who is best known for his movies Missing and Z. Music Box gives Jessica Lang the chance to show what a great actress she has become. It's the best performance of her career and an A-minus movie. Music Box is an edge-of-the-seat mystery and a powerful human story all in one, and one you should see this year or first thing next year. I'm Pat Collins, Channel 9 News. Hmm. All right, now we're going to go over to Russ Salzberg, who has more on the tragic story, the death of Billy Martin. Russ? Yeah, Jen, uh, we have sports coming up, and uh, certainly uh, not a fun night in sports. Again, we say goodbye to Billy Martin. Prices are reason enough to come to the Furval. You'll find there are a thousand reasons, like mink, leather, shearlings, even designer furs. In fact, the Fur Vault has hundreds of styles to choose from. After all, what good is the right price if you can't find the right coat? This holiday season, save 50% and more on fabulous furs, outerwear, and accessories. The Fur Vault. You deserve the best. Now you can afford it. Hello, I'm Nat Sherman. My wife Betty and I would like to take this opportunity to wish you and yours the very best holidays and good health in the coming years. To share happy days with you gives us great pleasure. At a prestigious cheese competition in New York, Cracker Barrel Cheddar wins a gold medal. It's 17th. And since nothing succeeds like success, introducing Cracker Barrel Havarti, the Manchetta. Munster and Baby Swiss, each made with the same care as our award-winning cheese. So when will they win you over? Cracker Barrel from Kraft, judged to be the best. Sharp. Most of the world's made for small people, but I like things made for me, big. Introducing Sharp Vision, the ultimate home theater. A remarkable portable 100-inch LCD projection system that makes every event... A big event. Zoom from 20 inches to an amazing 100 inches big. Sports so real, it's like being back on the court again. Sharp Vision, the ultimate home theater. You don't just watch it, you, you live, live it. it. To live the excitement, call 1-800-BE-SHARP. Who's the Boss is on five times a week, which is great because it's my second favorite show. Second favorite? Hey, I'm trying to be modest. Who's the Boss? Weeknights at 6 on Channel 9. Well, I guess whenever something like this happens, your first reaction is one of shock and, and disbelief, and then, of course, great sadness sets in. It's a terrible tragedy. Certainly it's compounded because of being Christmas Day. Uh, you know, it's a loss when anybody, you know, dies... Uh, of unnatural causes, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we have to say goodbye to Billy Martin. As reported earlier, he died in a car accident tonight. He was not driving the car, but nonetheless, uh, Billy Martin is dead. The, the man who was driving that car, um, we don't have anything else on yet, but he is still alive. And let's take a look at uh, how Billy would want us to remember him, and that would be in a Yankee uniform. And there he is trotting on to the field at Yankee Stadium at an old timer's day. That's back when uh, he was going to be fired and then rehired, and here's Yogi on him. Doc, you know, <laughs> like anything else, you know, just like when I heard Joe Collins dying one uh, this summer, 
uh, we're losing a lot of good guys, I'll tell you that. And uh, Billy, we're going to miss him. I'll tell you, Billy's a good baseball man. More than a baseball man, I was talking to your wife just before when she let us in, and she said it's, it's like losing a brother. It was. Uh, I know my wife knowing him when he was a young kid down St. Uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, when we were spring training. We played uh, with each other. Billy was a hard-nosed player. You know, he liked to win. He'll beat you any way he can, you know, the, the beach, and uh, he was good. Hard-nosed player and good, and I, I guess that's the way Billy Martin would want us all to remember him. Show must go on, so let's go on to uh, more sports tonight. Kind of a big football game taking place in Minnesota. If the Vikings win, they're the NFC champions of the Central Division. If they lose, they're out of the playoffs. If the Cincinnati Bengals win, they get an AFC wildcard berth. If they lose, they're also out of the playoffs. And right now, approaching halftime with seconds to go, I think, in the second quarter, Minnesota leads it by a score of 19-7. to All right, sometime tomorrow morning, Jets general manager Dick Steinberg is expected to fire coach Joe Walton. And the latest name mentioned as Joe's replacement is Michigan State head coach George Perlis, seen here in today's Aloha Bowl in Honolulu. Perlis says he hasn't been offered the job just yet, but if the Jets want him, he'd be interested in trading in his Spartan green for the Jet green. And who knows, if this turns out to be his last game at Michigan State, it had a happy ending. But apparently we don't have the video on that, but Perlis did have a happy ending. The, um, his Spartans beat the Hawaii Rainbows by a score of 33-13. to 13. All right, as we discussed last night, the Giants winning their division title has been a team effort all season long, but make no mistake about it, the offensive leader of the Giants is quarterback Phil Simms. But following yesterday's clincher, Phil wasn't taking any of the credit for himself. Instead, he chose to give it out to his boss. Bill does whatever he has to do for us to win the game. If it's not throw a pass, if it's to throw it, whatever, you know, he, he knows the situations and has pretty good feel for it. And we just go from there and, and uh, we gamble today twice on fourth downs. We get them. I think we go on and score both times. So uh, in, in that respect, a lot of things have been called right and we've executed. And I think that's you know, one of the big reasons why we, we had a good season. Let me ask the owner to assess what his coach has accomplished. Well, I think he got the maximum out of a a mixed bunch of, of players, some veterans, and some brand new kids. And I think, you know, I think no one could have expected the contribution that some of our rookies made to us at the start of the year. I think coach has to get credit for that. There's no question that Dave Meggett, being a pro bowler, is the rookie with the most notoriety. But he just heads a list including the likes of Guyton, Tillman, Jackson, Williams, and Cross, who all played a part in the Giants' success. I just felt like we had to do it, and our organization felt like we had to do it. And uh, I know there was some skepticism about it, but we were right. And saying you're right is one thing. Going out and proving it is something else. And the Giants proved yesterday that their coach was right. All right. Just as Phil Simms is the offensive leader of the Giants, Lawrence Taylor is the leader on defense. And here's what he told me about his coach's performance this year. You know, he's had his faults, and he, there's certain things that I think Bill has to change as a coach, and I won't go into it. But um, on the whole, the, the guy truly wants to win, um, and he's going to put his winners out there, and he's going to put his players that, that want to win out there, and you can't fault the guy for that. And, and on the whole, he's, he's has coached a very good season. Good job, but uh, LT doesn't want to tell his coach that he's perfect, and um, probably that's the way uh, Bill Parcells would like it to be. And that's it for a sad night, I guess, in sports. Yeah. I, just checking on the computer here, Russ, and you might like to know that it turns out now uh, the wire services are reporting that the truck was driven by Martin's longtime friend, William Reedy of Detroit. He's listed in serious condition tonight, but he is expected to survive. Uh, they say that Martin passed away just before 7 o'clock tonight, and an autopsy is scheduled for Tuesday, so we'll have more information then. Tomorrow. Still ahead on Channel 9 News, will the cold wave continue throughout this week? And we'll show you some work of some very special young playwrights. Stay tuned. An important announcement from your Dodge dealer.
the guaranteed rebate. Only at your Dodge dealer. Nobody can match us. Let's talk about communications today. What makes the telephone work? What makes it work? Well, there's teeny tire computers and wires, switchboards, sound waves. Give me an answer, somebody. Satellites. Press the button or dial the dial. Okay, Billy. Tell me now, what makes the telephone work? My father. <laughs> yes, it's still Billy's father and the thousands of other people at New Jersey Bell and Bell Atlantic that make the telephone work. To my beautiful wife. It's nice to know he still loves the way you look. And if you wear dentures, you can count on Effordent to freshen up dentures and clean away stains so well. With Effordent, all you'll notice is you. When I played football, I crunched quarterbacks. But now I crunch these, JB's pigskins. The new pork rind still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Winter sale. 20 to 50% off regular prices at Barney's New York. Well, no snow to speak of uh, this holiday, but certainly plenty of cold out there. No white Christmas, Jennifer, but maybe early tomorrow morning a little bit to kind of uh, interfere with the commute. And one more price to pay before we can get a little bit of mild weather around here. More about that in a moment. Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's check our current conditions out there, see how we're doing tonight. Cloudy, couple of dozen. That's what we have. The chill factor, 11 above with that southwest wind of 10. And a falling barometer at 29.83. Top of the evening to everybody. Glad you could join us tonight. A little bit of science. All right. Let's have a Lloyd Lindsay Young hello. Co-op City. Got to say happy birthday to Joe Savino. Way to go, Joe. Hope you have many, many more. All right, another, yet another in a series of Arctic blasts getting ready to move into the metropolitan area. This could go down as the coldest December ever. We're keeping tabs on it. It's going to be very, very close. Meanwhile, down in the Southland, boy, I'll tell you, it was a, a unbelievable in Southern Florida. How would you like to go down to Miami to celebrate Christmas? You wake up. It's 30 degrees, Fort Lauderdale, 29, amazing, 15 inches of snow on the ground, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, 13 inches of snow on the ground, a record low of zero early this morning. Anyway, the warm front moving eastward will overspread some light precipitation into the tri-state area late tonight and tomorrow morning. Looks like just the dusting to me. Meanwhile, dry weather. Over the central portion of the nation, dense fog in the interior of California. A record low, or high max actually, or low max I should say, Bakersfield, 38 degrees. All right, here's the Arctic air coming down once again. It's just incredible, but indications are that by later in the week, our wind flow, rather than being northwesterly, will switch around to the southwest, and I can see considerable moderation by about Friday, particularly as we head into the next weekend. All right, here's the satellite imagery. Nothing happening yet, although flurries are starting to pop up at Wrightstown and Trenton, and light snow is being reported at Williamsport. Here's the heart of the precipitation out in central Pennsylvania and western New York State. <laughs> 25 by Thursday, then it gets a lot better. Friday, probably up in the mid-30s, and maybe by Saturday, I could actually see temperatures over 40 degrees, Jennifer. Wow, that would be a shock to the system. Huh? Well, it certainly would. But even with that, it still probably will be the coldest December ever. Yeah, Just incredible. incredible. Did you get a lot of uh, holiday gifts this season? Well, I've, I've got a few that I'm, I'm going to go home and kind of salivate over. Are you going to keep them all or are you going to return a couple of them? I'll probably... Uh, Return three of them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's the count. We'll remember that. It's all part of the Christmas tradition, I guess. Receive a gift, open it, in many cases, take it back to the store. But before you do, El White on your side has some things you should know about. Tri-state consumers are protected by similar laws. In New Jersey and New York, you have 20 days to return unused or undamaged goods. For your choice of cash or credit, 
unless the store clearly states otherwise. Seven days in Connecticut. The store must conspicuously post their refund policy in the store, either on the items or at the register or at a sign clearly visible from the registers. Refund policies different from the law must state the time you have to take back an item. Whether you get a cash refund or credit, whether a receipt is required, any other limitations, such as all sales final, must be stated too. I like a nice, good store, good policy, good refund policy that's not busy. Clothes, sizes that don't fit. That, that's the, the only thing I usually have a problem with. Know the refund policy of the store that they're considering making a purchase at. The refund policies vary tremendously from store to store, and they may even vary, vary within a chain. You can take a store violating the refund laws to court, but that may be more trouble than it's worth. So it's always best to check out a store's refund policy before you buy. Many happy returns. I'm Al White on your side, and we'll be watching. Well, uh, just about five minutes to 11 now. Here's a last look at our top story. Police now say that former New York Yankee player and manager Billy Martin died in an alcohol-related accident. He was killed this evening when a pickup truck he was riding in skidded off an icy road near Binghamton, New York. Police say that the driver of the truck, Martin's longtime friend, William Reddy of Detroit, was charged with driving while intoxicated. He, by the way, is expected to survive. Now, finally tonight, many kids get to act in their school play. About how many students actually get a chance to write the school play? Well, that's what some budding young playwrights have done. They've done that exactly that in Newark. Chuck Gomez was there as they raised the curtain on a Christmas drama. Forget the visions of sugar plums dancing in these kids' heads. St. Rocco's kindergarten class had work to do. Rewrites, scene changes, and added line or two. These are writers, you see. They've authored a few books, and now they're moving on to plays. It was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The inspiration came from a familiar Christmas story. The class is encouraged to write and read from diaries each day. He is my cat. My dog is special. The words become poems and short stories, all part of an effort to spark creativity at an early age. I think we have to have very, very high expectations of what our students can produce, and then they produce what we expect of them. And the future wordsmiths are encouraged to write about what they know. I like to write about me and my mommy, my brother, my sister, my grandmother. What do you like writing about? Writing about Christmas and and my family. From classroom to stage, the school auditorium, now a theater. For the young playwrights, the words of a childhood diary are ready to come to life in a play about Christmas in the city, performed before an audience of classmates. I love Santa. I love my whole family. But some of the actor playwrights needed a little prompting. Others were just fine. Look, look, it's Santa. Look, Santa's driving a red Santa. <laughs> the audience gave the production raves. And for the kindergarten class of St. Rocco, the appreciation was returned with a Yuletide message. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And I in Newark, Chuck Gomez, Channel 9 News. Couldn't have said it better. Well, we want to remind you that tomorrow night, Channel 9 will present an A-plus for kids holiday special. It's called Great Kids. It features exceptional students from around our area who could be tomorrow's stars. They're comics, singers, dancers, inventors, prodigies, and poets. That's tomorrow night from 8 to 9 right here on Channel 9. And now for Lloyd, Russ, the rest of the Channel 9 news team, myself, we wish you very happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Oh,
is coming to town. He knows.